With the brand new open world third person action RPG Gotham Knights imminently releasing and featuring four playable characters from Gotham City, we wanted to keep you up to date on the game and what to expect before you buy or play it for yourself. So in this one we're going to go over seven things you need to know before you play. Definitely click like down below to show support for the video if you enjoy it and subscribe and click the bell because we have so much content planned every single day that you don't want to miss. Comment which DC villain is your favourite and why. Personally the Penguin is up there for me thanks to Danny DeVito's amazing performance performance in Batman Returns. Let's start off though with number one, the story. Well, there's no way around it without just saying it. In this game, Batman is dead and Gotham City is in trouble. On top of this, a new expansive criminal underworld has taken to the streets of Gotham and the responsibility has fallen on the Bat family to protect the city. You'll need to discipline the corrupt cops and fight the criminals, and there are mysteries to solve that connect the darkest chapters of Gotham's history city into the game. The game is an open world action RPG, so you're going to be beating up criminals of Gotham City while taking down super villains and uncovering the mysteries of the city as one of the four playable characters in the Bat family. And this brings us to our next point, number two, the playable characters. With Batman dead, you can choose who you want to play out of Red Hood, Robin, Batgirl and Nightwing. Red Hood or Jason Todd is an intense vigilante. He became this way due to his own violent death and then being forcibly resurrected by one of Batman's most dangerous foes. He has trouble keeping his own temper in check, but he will not hesitate to step in the line of fire when a friend is threatened. Red Hood wants crime to pay because Gotham City is built on a foundation of corruption and he's been on the receiving end of it. Jason has trained to reach the peak of human strength and he's proficient in multiple combat techniques with all manner of weapons, both traditional and high tech. After reconciling with the Bat family, he has embraced Batman's non-lethal combat methods. His fighting style is gun kata and he's an expert with modern firearms, explosives and interrogation methods. Then there's Nightwing or Dick Grayson. He's an natural leader, an optimist, and probably the most charismatic of the Bat family. He grew up in an unorthodox but loving circus family, so he values close personal bonds highly. Dick believes that for the fight to be worth it, there has to be something real to fight for, and that something for him has always been other people. He was Batman's first protege before becoming a hero in his own right. Nightwing boasts mastery in acrobatics and is an expert at taking down foes with his signature dual sticks. His fighting style is Kali and he is an expert at acrobatics. Then there's Batman girl or Barbara. She has always been a person of action and in her mind backing down is never an option. When a spinal injury threatened to end her crime fighting career, she adapted, applying her expertise as Oracle, a forensic intelligence hub with a global reach. After years of pain, surgery and rehabilitation, she eventually recovered and strengthened by Oracle as well as Barbara's now unbreakable determination to protect Gotham, Batgirl has returned. She's highly trained in a variety of fighting styles such as kickboxing and jujitsu. Her signature weapon is the Tonfa, and Barbara also displays great skill when it comes to hacking or coding in computers and technological systems to dig for information. And then there's Robin or Tim Drake, possibly the youngest of the Batman family, but also the smartest and a master of detective reasoning. Tim is a true believer in Batman's mission and is motivated by conviction that Gotham City needs a hero rather than being motivated by personal loss. Batman was a mentor of the highest caliber who personified the type of man that Tim hopes to become. He's an expert fighter armed with a collapsible quarterstaff and is skilled in the art of stealth. Tim also possesses a background in combined psychological warfare and behavioural sciences, all of which sets the stage for him to accomplish any mission. His fighting style is wushu and he's particularly skilled in detective work as well as with his quarterstaff. Next for number three, you can explore and fight in the open world of Gotham City. As an open world game, you can explore the city, encountering and stopping criminal activity throughout, whether travelling on foot, taking to the rooftops via grappling, or zooming around in the the iconic Bat Cycle. There are five districts to explore including Lower, Historic, Downtown, New and North Gotham. Each has their own faction presence, criminal activity and areas to explore or liberate. Number four, multiplayer and co-op because this game can be played solo but also in co-op with a friend. Unfortunately the maximum number of co-op players is only two so two people total can play at one time so you and a single friend. However each playable character can also unlock special co-op moves, takedowns and abilities abilities such as buffs for a teammate or tagging enemies to make for easier situational awareness. The game has also got a drop in drop out system so you can easily tag team or revert to solo while playing. Importantly your experience, loot and story progression can also be transferred from co-op to solo and vice versa so you won't lose anything should you join a friend. Number 5. Supervillains you will encounter. Within the game you can expect to meet several iconic DC supervillains including the crafty penguin, one of my favourite villains, the cold blooded Mr Freeze who you 
definitely don't want to lose your cool against. The criminal mastermind Harley Quinn, who will definitely show you a good time. The shape-shifting Clayface in his Colossus glory, as well as the mysterious Court of Owls, who are an extremely secret society made up of Gotham City's most wealthy families. Then number six, the Belfry. This clock tower and secret headquarters was built by Bruce Wayne inside the old Wayne Tower at the heart of Gotham City. This will be our home base of operations, where we can track mission progression, upgrade gear and switch between or manage the Bat Family characters. When a night ends, you can return to the Belfry to use clues and experience collected to advance and prepare for your next challenge and mission ahead. Number 7, Platforms and Release. The game is available on the 21st of October for PlayStation 5, Xbox Series X and S, as well as PC. So if you did find anything interesting or new in this video definitely click like down below to show support and click subscribe and the bell because you don't want to miss any of the content we already have planned for you guys every single day the two videos on screen now we think you might really enjoy if you did enjoy this one you don't have to but if you found this video interesting you're probably going to find these ones interesting too so check them out if you want to and tell us what you think after watching in the comments down below